Hi, you are tuning into our Wani Review with me, Cynthia Ng. Now, on this episode, we want to take a look at how the COVID-19 pandemic has uh, disrupted higher education. We know that universities around the world have been massively disrupted, so we want to look into the long-term impacts on universities and also students who are graduating to a very uncertain world. Joining me today on this show, I have the pleasure, is uh, Professor Sibrande Popema of Sunway University. I hope I pronounced it correctly, Professor. Uh, congratulations, firstly, on your recent appointment as president of Sunway University and, of course, welcome to Malaysia. Thank you. <laughs> now, Professor, let's talk about when all this happened, the pandemic, right? When we first entered the lockdown, there were talks that the traditional university model is dead. Classes were cancelled, student enrollment fell sharply. What were the first thoughts that went through your mind when that happened? Actually, it was not all that unexpected. Um, basically, universities had been thinking about more online teaching mm -hmm. uh, and learning than uh, uh, in the past. But yes, what happened was that from one day to the next, literally, a university, so also Sunway University, had to transfer from face-to-face -face teaching to online teaching. And it went remarkably well. So what happened is staff, had to take their computers home, for instance. Mm -hmm. That was all organized in no time. And then in the week after, they started teaching online. And it went quite well. Of course, they got all sorts of support to do this, uh, but the, the platforms that exist uh, for this are very good. You know, in the past, we didn't know about Teams, we didn't know about Zoom, right. uh, and all of a sudden, we find out that this is working fine. In fact, we have learned a lot. Uh, but the most important things we have learned is that, yes, teaching online is very good. The students did well. Uh, in fact, they got more points. They had better grades than in the past. So this year, uh, students did about 10% better than the year before. So that worked quite well. The students were satisfied, but of course, they long for the campus, they long for their friends. So we've learned two things. One, mm -hmm. online teaching can work very, very well. And two, students do want to come to campus. But I, I'm quite certain that it doesn't quite replace the feeling of coming to classes and interacting with your professors. You know, how has uh, the industry changed or adapted to all these changes? Yes. Well, the thing is that uh, interacting with professors actually was not that bad mm -hmm. because students could ask questions to the professors and the professors could ask those questions. So there was a lot of con contact between the professors and the students. But what could not be done, obviously, were the practicals. So mm -hmm. at Sunway University, for instance, uh, we have the School of Hospitality. You, you, know, you cannot cook, uh, well, you can cook at home, but you cannot do the courses uh, that you want to do at the university. So when it was possible back uh, in January to come back to the university and do courses, that's the first things that we were allowed to open up and also did open up. So, and they've been working very, very hard to also catch up with what was you know, missed last year. So right. we've been, been trying to give the students all that experience. Uh, other labs, for instance, in the School of Life Sciences, they've adapted a large part of that still to the internet. So part of that could be done and now they're back and they can actually practice it uh, in the real lab again. So yes, in the future, I think we will have more lectures that will be online. Mm -hmm. When students are coming to class, it will be much more about discussion, uh, asking questions, small groups, etc. And uh, the practicals, of course, will have to be done at the university. So you're saying we're going to look at a hybrid model it will, be, it, it will remain hybrid. You okay. know, right now it's hybrid. In the future, it will remain hybrid, uh, except there will be more face-to-face uh, -face discussions again in the classroom. But, you know, the, the previous teaching for large groups and so on is probably going to disappear because we found that doing that uh, uh, online is, in fact, much more effective. Students mm. can watch it in their time, they can watch it again in their time. And what we've seen is that the results are better. You know, they retain more of the knowledge than when they just hear it one time in class. Okay. So that time then we can next use to, for them to come to class and have discussions you know, with each other and with the teacher. So I think that's going to be greatly improved. 
So I want to talk about student enrollment. Of course, I mean, one of the biggest concerns for this sector particularly is international students um, who during the pandemic, many were forced to go home to return to their yep. home country. And how about attracting them back to mm -hmm. the university? How has that been? Yeah, so, so that, of course, was very important. Sunway is a private university, so we are dependent on students. That's also why we work very hard to give them a good experience online. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that, yes, you know, they did better than normally. They were quite satisfied, you know, in an international comparison, satisfaction was 10% better than the satisfaction, you know, worldwide. So that was good. Uh, and what we did is we told the students at some point that they would be able to do all of their courses online. So international students that were not able and are not yet able to come to us, we have guaranteed them that they can do their whole course online and make the progress they need to make. And the same to students from Malaysia that could not come back. Uh, at the same time, we've guaranteed the students that do come to campus that we will teach them on campus. So these two guarantees. And the result is that um, this year, we now have overall number of students of the university, so that includes the students we had and retained. And the retainment was better than in previous years as well. Uh, we have 5% more students this year than we had last year. If we look at number of international students, last year 10% of our students uh, were international students. This year it's 12.5% okay. that are international students. So of that bigger number, an even bigger percentage now are international students. So we've done quite well. I know that's not true for all universities, yeah. but I believe that it's a couple of the things we did that made a difference, which was guaranteeing them that, you know, even if they could not come, we would teach them, they would make progress. So if I were to look at the overall numbers of international students in Malaysia, I believe, uh, uh, based on a recent study, it has more than halved in 2020 compared to 2019. Okay, so the increase that you're talking about is 2020 to 2021, right? Yes, yes. So um, as a university and you're competing with many others, thousands around the world, now there yes. is somewhat like a level playing field at this moment for the, universities. So yeah. how do you stand out? Well, there is somewhat of a level playing field, but there are a couple of things in our advantage. Um, one of them is that a lot of students uh, that perhaps wanted to go international also students from Malaysia that wanted to go international, of course, did not do that because uh, they would have to go to the UK where right. the situation was disastrous or the US uh, in terms of COVID, but also in terms of uh, backlash against Asian people. So I think part of those students actually have been coming to Sunway right. University. The other advantage we have is when you look internationally, that also students from other countries now we'll see Malaysia as a much better destination than many other countries. So students that used to go to Australia or, or the United States or Canada or the United Kingdom, now Malaysia is a better destination. Malaysia handled the COVID uh, pandemic much mm -hmm. better than those countries. Uh, Malaysia is a country where you will not uh, be harassed because you are Asian. Right. So I, I think Malaysia actually ends up with all of this with some advantages. Now, well, Professor, I'd like to switch gears to talk about uh, students, right? I mentioned earlier in the show that students will be graduating to a very different environment. I'm not sure if you heard a recent report by our statistics department that a lot of our young graduates are graduating to minimum wage. 1,000, 1,500, that's half from yeah. what they were earning before. And these are very worrying trends that we're seeing. So where, where do you see the role of universities? I mean, if you look at some of the problems that we're facing right now is uh, job security, unemployment, poverty. These are the issues that mm -hmm. are really changing the world. And where do you see, as, a, as an academician, you know, where do you see the role? Okay, I, you know, this is all true, and this is because the economy is, you know, at a low at the moment. But I also know that after this, there will be a big rebound. Mm -hmm. So there will be many chances for people that have, you know, academic qualifications to get jobs again. You know, I'm, I'm sure of that. But there's also a bigger issue, which is the way we are training our students. Because in universities, generally, the focus has been on knowledge. Right. 
And we know that uh, employers actually are looking for more than just knowledge. They are looking for you know, what people call soft skills. Right. But at Sunway University, uh, we are right now uh, focusing on three characteristics we want all of our students to have. And the first one actually is that we want all our students to be aware of the sustainable development goals and planetary health. In fact, uh, we have the Jeffrey Sachs Institute at Sunway University that is very big in sustainable development goals, also has masters in sustainable development goals. So we have the people that actually can do that. Now mind you, the special thing is we want all our students to learn about this, you know, not just the program, literally every student that comes to Sunway University will learn about sustainable development goals, will learn about planetary health, and we are soon, we are also going to start a planetary health center mm -hmm. at Sunway University. We will have a very big name. I cannot say yet who it is, but in a few months I can tell you. Uh, so that is one. So characteristic of Sunway University students will be aware of sustainable development goals, aware of planetary health. Number two, they have to have very good digital skills. Mm -hmm. Now you might say, how do we teach digital skills? basically in all the programs by having much more project-based learning. Projects on your own, but also projects with other students. Because for those projects, you need the digital skills, and also you will need to collaborate with other ones. So that's very important. There we take lessons, for instance, from Ecole 42, uh, that we now have, the, the French program that is uh, now also at Sunway, at FutureX, and where students, um, pay no tuition fee, they have no teachers, uh, there's no classrooms, but it's peer-to-peer. -peer. Mm -hmm. And they work together on projects. And I think for that kind of thing, we can learn a lot. We are learning a, a lot already. The third characteristic we want all of our students to have, and now I'm getting to employability, is that they have to be people that have an entrepreneurial mindset. So that's different from saying we're going to give them an entrepreneurship course. Mm. You know, in our school of business, we have entrepreneurship course. This is about an entrepreneurial attitude, a mindset. So we will be showing them examples and we will be teaching them some skills. And again, we will be doing that for all our students. So a student that comes from Sunway University in the near future, because we will be starting all of it this year, will be aware of the sustainable development goals, will be, uh, have very good digital skills, and will have uh, this entrepreneurial mindset that will help them when they go and work for a company, because a company wants people that are entrepreneurial, that do new things, that think. Uh, but if there's no job, and this is especially for, you know, people from our school of arts, when they finish, there may not be a job waiting. But when they have entrepreneurial skills, they will set up something themselves. When you study psychology, you can set up something yourself. You know, there may not be the request for that many psychologists, but you can set up, you know, some small business for yourself. That's the sort of skills we want them to have. We know that people will have different jobs over their lifetime. So, you know, just learning one thing does not make yeah. sense. It's much more about the skills and the attitude you have. Which is the conversation that we've been having, right? How do you prepare students for jobs that don't even exist yet? Absolutely. By giving them skills. By giving them, you know, a certain mindset. I'd like to pick your point about you know accelerating digitalization, which is what the pandemic has done. But what we have also seen is the pandemic has exacerbated the digital divide between the haves and have-nots. And I know that with whatever that's happening in the world right now, funding aid scholarships for students who are poor is more limited these days. And you know where does Sunway University stand in 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 addressing those? an equality in access to education. Yeah. Well, Sunway University is a private university, right? right. So, you know, the, the, there's, of course, the big state uh, uh, universities that provide a lot of that. But yes, also at Sunway University, 
the Jeffrey Chef Foundation okay. has been providing uh, uh, basically around right now 450 million ringgit mm. uh, over the past 10 years in bursaries and uh, reductions in tuition fee and so on. So, you know, Jeffrey Chair, I should say Tantri Jeffrey Chair, has really provided a lot of uh, uh, young people with the opportunity to get an education. And that, that's very close to his heart, but I have to tell you, I'm here because I subscribe to that. You know, I subscribe both to uh, the Sustainable Development Goals. Those are to me also very important. I subscribe to the fact that Sunway University is not for profit, which to me is very important, otherwise I would not be working at Sunway University. And the third one is, you know, supporting people to get uh, out of poverty through education is what I believe is very important. You know, I was a poor boy myself. You know, I would have never studied in the Netherlands if not for the fact that there were bursaries at the mm -hmm. time. I knew I had to achieve, you know, I knew better than my colleague students that I had to achieve. If I would not achieve, I would have lost my bursary. So I've always been telling my children that that was a blessing in disguise. I had no other option than to study. And I've personally met Tan Street Jeffrey Chair and I think he has pledged to, to disperse one billion ringgit worth of uh, aid for yes. students. And, and, and that's, that's really um, encouraging to know, especially in these times of uncertainties. I would like to also talk about research in um, research in universities, mm -hmm. which is lifeblood for higher learning in institutions. So how can research institutions strive in such uncertain times, going back to funding and you know, going back yep. to, to, to knowing where do I put my money into, where, where do I focus on? Yes. Okay, so uh, again there we've made some changes. Uh, you know, many uh, uh, investigators were sort of working on their own, you know, so one-man band uh, with some students. Uh, what we are doing right now is that we made a number of clusters where uh, uh, scientists from different fields are working together. So they're from the different schools and they're working, for instance, on future cities mm -hmm. or they're working on new materials or they're working on sustainable business. And they're all coming together. So first of all, working in teams rather than as an individual. Second, this was a very good time of doing that because at the same time, Malaysia has uh, uh, instituted their uh, what's called 1010 MISTI, Malaysia uh, Science, Technology, Innovation. And those are programs to actually uh, uh, indicate the government priorities mm -hmm. Uh, which are, you know, 10 socio-economic fields with 10 technologies and you sort of cross them and uh, on those crossings actually we need to do research and the universities can do that research. The universities are the places for innovation for the country and the country has embraced that and so do we at Sunway University. So these are all subjects that actually we can contribute to, other universities can contribute to and yes, it's the government priorities, but it's also the industry priorities. Mm -hmm. So we will be work working much, much more with industry than in the past. And in that way, help Malaysian industry to become more innovative and for the university to make sure that we have more funding. Mm -hmm. So as I said uh, uh, to you previously, um, this afternoon uh, we will be signing a contract with AstraZeneca for some uh, cooperation and it is things like that that uh, you show this obviously is a foreign company but also present here in Malaysia uh, but we will be working with Malaysian companies in all areas uh, you know for instance water or agriculture all of those areas will be covered and universities can work with them uh, the government can invest in that Mm -hmm. because this is how to make Malaysia stronger. Uh, if you look at research in Malaysia, it really is a lot better than a lot of people think. You know, so people think that, oh, you know, uh, Singapore is much better, United States is much better, you know, UK is much better. It's not true. There are some fields, for instance, engineering or computer science, where Malaysia is world class. So I recently analyzed uh, all the countries and looked at publications and the citations to the papers. And it turns out that when it comes to engineering, 
that not the US is number one. Hong Kong is number one. Singapore is number two. And Malaysia is number three in the world in quality. If you go to computer science, again, it's Singapore, Hong Kong, and Malaysia is number six. And there's only one European country. Australia is number four. There's only one European country in, in that top six, which is Finland. So the strength in you know, these important areas that are important for industry, in engineering, in computer science, are here in Southeast Asia. So that's one of the things we have to preach much more yeah. because that will make students from other countries wanting to come here to Malaysia. That will make industries to come to Malaysia. So we have to make much more advertisement for that, you know, that this is the place where we have these skills. So t uh, to pick up from what you said earlier about Malaysia do have the talent and we have the expertise, perhaps not so much on branding and marketing of <laughs> what our capabilities are. Okay, anyway, uh, Professor, just to wrap things up, um, just your thoughts about, you know, you, when you look at what's happening in this world today, the pandemic, uh, drawing from experience in Europe, I know Europe has gone through so many crises. You know, you have the uh, Great Depression and then the global financial crisis in 2008. And this disruption that we're facing right now, where, what are your, your thoughts about how universities should adapt quick and make decisions decisively? Okay, yeah, so, you know, the last one, the, the crisis in 2008, I actually became president of the University of Groningen in 2008. So exactly when this came. It was a wonderful chance actually to make changes. It was a great chance to improve our teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, you know, the, the results improved dramatically over those years. It was a great chance to get more satisfied students, because when your teaching is better, they'll be more satisfied. It was a great chance to focus on some actually uh, important subjects. So in Groningen, we focused at that time on healthy aging, mm. which is the big question why some people are 70 years old and are fine, and other people are 40 or 50 and have several diseases. So the question is, what is the cause of health? <laughs> Not what is the cause of disease, but what's the cause of health? Uh, so that, that was one subject. The other one was had to do with... Um, energy and not a question whether we should have sustainable energy we know that yeah. but how are we going to make the transition which is also important for Malaysia how are we going to make the transition from fossil energy to sustainable energy and the third one was dealing with sustainable society and it was a very similar recipe to what I'm proposing here it's bringing people from with different uh, disciplines together to study these things, because these things, they, they are not one discipline. You know, they're not one dimensional. You need different areas. You know, when it comes to energy, yes, it's science and engineering, uh, uh, but it's also social sciences. Right. You know, how do you get people to use less energy? And at the end of the day, it's about economics, because sustainable energy solutions will only work when they are indeed sustainable financially. So you also need that input. So for, for all those areas, and the same now with the 10-10 you know, MISTI uh, here in Malaysia, it's important for scientists from different areas to work together. Mm -hmm. That's one. And the second thing, it's important that government, academia, industry, and the general population work together. And then you can be successful. What would be your goal during your tenure here? Oh, my goal, because I have a very clear goal, Sunway University wants to be one day the Harvard of the East. You know, that's, that's Tom Three's goal. And of course, that will not happen during his lifetime and neither to mine. <laughs> but we will make significant steps in that. That's why Sunway University is working together with the likes of Cambridge University and with Oxford and with Harvard and with MIT and with the universities in Singapore, it is all so we can learn from the best. Mm -hmm. You know, I have some principles that I bring from Europe. Uh, we can learn from these partners. Uh, our collaborations, interestingly, you know, so we do collaborations within Sunway University, but now, now we have these collaborations. It's become a lot easier to work with our partners in these big universities. You know, as long as it's one scientist, he or she is not seen. If we have a concerted effort in an area, so we will collaborate 
with uh, uh, University of Cambridge in uh, infectious diseases. So they have chosen uh, for global health as well and particularly for infectious diseases. Mm -hmm. So of course COVID, but uh, 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 dengue of course and, and, and influenza and so on. And we will be one of the four universities in Africa and Asia they want to work with. Mm. Uh, if it comes to future cities, we work with Lancaster University, uh, which is also our partner. You know, if you go to Sunway University, you get two diplomas for the price of one. You get a diploma from Sunway University and you get one from Lancaster University. So you also have a diploma from a UK, you know, top 10 UK university. But now we are increasingly also start research collaboration with right. them. Uh, so I think those are the kind of things that will help us uh, to achieve the things that we want to achieve, which is to be an international top university. You make me feel like going back to university again. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds very interesting what you are doing at uh, Southern University and the visions that the uh, university, of course, Dan Street Jeffrey has. Thank you so much, Professor, for coming on the show. It was great speaking with you. Thank you once again. Well, you have been watching Awani Review with me, Cynthia Ng. We'll see you again in the next episode.